Hey guys, today I'll be showing you my appliance store depo for you for July of 2020. Yeah, I do apologize if you hear the microphone a little bit different. The thing is that when I was doing updates to my computer, it kind of like um, defaulted my microphone and the settings that I had for it. So I'll be working on that in a later date when I can. But yeah, so appliances. So yeah, this is the archetype that came out in Battles of Legends Armageddon. This is the archetype they use in Arc V, which I actually do like the art style of this, which is this one right here. Um, if you see him in the on the left, sorry, I just something. And so yeah, this game, this deck is really fun. I gotta say, this deck is really fun. Um, they're all machines, which is really cool, and they're all level one. So you have a lot of good plays with these things. And do a lot of shenanigans. So, what my goal is to have fun with this deck, do shenanigans, but not. I was I I didn't want to make this too serious or not too, um, clumsy. So, what I did was that I you know sit down, uh, sit down and watch. Um, how do we play these how they do it and how is this like work because we're still missing cards for this deck and we're missing a couple of spells a lake monster and a few mon uh, main monsters because right now we only have three main monsters and five extra deck monsters if I'm correct yeah five extra deck monsters yeah five extra deck monsters and a lot uh, and a lot of heaping spells uh, no trap cards just you know this and that but anyways, I did my um what I did was I just you know went out had fun with this deck I had a lot of blast with this deck if I recommend anything Get the core right now of appliances because right now the core is like five dollars Five of uh, three copies of each I bought the entire core for five dollars and I don't regret nothing It's actually pretty fun and I will tell you what are my uh, these choices that I that I, I used to this deck and if you have any changes for this deck let me know in the comments below and you know we'll see what we can do so first off we're going to be starting with the appliances now the appliances are level one machine type monsters they're very weak but they do so much in the extra deck that is really cool so first off we're going to start with the appliances because they're really fun we have the main man himself appliance or socket roll this is my favorite and he's adorable as fuck look at him he's cute look at those little hands his feet plugs he's cute i love him i want a plushie yes i'm a grown yeah I'm a, I'm a man and i like plushies we all like we all love plushies so yeah so it's a level one monster it's a machine type dark it has 100 attack and 100 defense it reads if another appliance or monster you um monster you can you can if you control an appliance or monster you can special summon this card from your hand if another appliance or soccer roll is special summoned to the field while this card is in the uh while you control this card is monster except during that you can special summon one appliance or soccer roll from the deck i do apologize for the sound in the back they're doing constructions because there were some Weather storm over here where I live. You can only use this effect once per hour. So basically, you can special summon three. If you have both of these guys, uh, you have a plants or soccer, uh, one soccer roll and another one in the hand, or you did special summon another way. You can basically summon all three in one go, which is pretty cool. Sorry. Then we have three copies of a plants or breaker blunt, breaker blunts, blunts, blunts. Bunsel, Bunkle, Bunkle, uh, Breaker, 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 Bunkle, Bunkle. I, I, I don't know how you say that. And it's a cute little fox dog thing. I don't know which one it is because I think it's a fox. I don't know, but if you can see, he's a, he's a, he's a breaker. He, you know, um, you know those big giant breaker handles that you go for electricity or something like that. It's pretty cool. I like the design. He's a obviously he's a level one. He has zero attack, zero defense. He's a machine. Water. He's a he's he's water type. He's a water, and 
then yeah this is actually this is actually is not that bad of a card i thought it was going to be bad but it's actually not that bad it reads during the damage triangle if an appliance or monster you control battles an opponent's monster quick effect you can discard this card for that battle that monster you control cannot be destroyed by ba destroy also you take no battle damage which is really nice if an appliance or monster you controlled will be destroyed by a card effect you can banish this card is um this card from your field or graveyard instead. so ba so it's really nice because you when you special summon this card if anyway or you got it out of the field you can special you can banish him from the field or from the graveyard which is nice and it's a um return of the dragon lords in the uh the hand which is nice i gotta say pretty cool now we got three copies of appliancer copy buckle buckler buckle 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 i don't know how you say it, but he is a copy he is a facts uh you know those little um oh my god i know what it is you know the it's i know it's and people are gonna say oh it's the scanning machine no it's the um is has anybody seen if, if, if you ever seen edit eddie um i think there's a bunch of you don't know what edit eddie is Let's go go find the internet well there's this little device that you can just um you can change you can put uh there's it has letters and you put them and when you uh when you trigger it it comes out that letter and each time when you do it it comes out another letter so that's what it is i think or it is a scanner from you know those um when you scan the um the items in the check and the check and the check uh the check uh then checking the source i don't know but i like him he's really cool and this is i think the second best of all the appliances here's the guitar one appliance from monster you control Special one this card from your hand, and if you do, this card becomes the name of that appliance of uh, that monster for the rest of the, uh, the turn. During your main set, except this card was sent to the graveyard, um, you can banish this card. Then target one appliance or monster you control. Special summon one appliance or monster with the same name from hand or graveyard to the field, which is pretty good. So easily, if you already use this for a link summon and you did not special summon him from his effect, you can easily banish him. Special summon one appliance or monster that you use on the field and bring that one from the hand, which is really nice. Um, there's a lot of really shenanigan things you can do with the appliances, which I like. So, yeah, I like it. So, next up, we're going to be dealing with the Cyber Monsters that we have. Now, for the Cyber Monsters, we're running two copies of Parallel Exceed. This is actually a really good card because it can special summon itself for free. Uh, it reads, if this, card is uh, if this card is special summoned by the effect of Parallel Exceed, it becomes level 4. It's already jump becomes half. Um, you can only use you know, the following effects of this once per turn. If you link summon, you can special summon this card with in a in a marker where there where is was spe um, a marker where you can special summon him. And if this card was normal or special, you can special summon one parallel exceed from your deck. So easily enough, you can special summon this and have two copies there, and you have two more materials to go to a big link play, which is nice. And last of the cybers, we're running one goose uh, goose gooserius. A agonister now this card i used to think it was going to be crappy i thought but no now i'm seeing it people playing it the ones that i've saw with the appliances it makes sense now aries when a, when a link monster is destroyed by battle you can special them as a card from your hand when you link when you, when a link monster destroys an opponent's monster by battle you can inflict damage to your opponent equal to the destroyed original attack when an attack is declared involving a link monster you control uh, an opponent's monster you can banish this card then uh from the graveyard the the attack of those monsters become three thousand for that turn um oh i forgot uh yeah so that that's another cyber we're running also two copies of this guy formal skipper i had three i i have still have my three copies from the salomon great um structure deck and now this come now this card comes to play and wow it is actually it's worth and if you heard that that was my my fingers i'm sorry i'm just like giddy right now during the main phase you can reveal one link monster from your next day and if you do when you link summon this turn you can treat this as the link material with the same name type attribute um as the reveal monster if this card is sent to the graveyard as the link material, you can add a level five or higher cyber's monster from your deck to your hand so easily enough you can add any of these two for free which is nice and it's a great attribute in my opinion 
Now, next up, this is the only warrior type monster we're winning is the Code Breaker Zero Day. I have these guys in my um bind in my boxes. Never used them because I didn't know what kind of deck I can make them. But now that I'm seeing what is the potential that these guys have because of their arrows. Then yeah, Ares all in monster pointed to this card loses 1,000 of attack, except for the Codebreaker Link monsters, which we only have two. If Codebreaker Link monster on the field is destroyed by battle by card effect, while this card is in the field, you can destroy this card. If this card is destroyed by battle by card effect, you can add one Codebreaker zero damage from your hand or deck. From your deck to your hand. Sorry. <laughs> now. Why am I using this? Well, because of the effects of the Codebreaker Link monsters. They have the effect to special summon Codebreaker Zero Day for free. And yeah, pretty much that's what it is. Now, the only hand trap we're running is Triple Ash Blossom. I know people are screaming, my, my, my wallet is going to hurt. I don't have Ash. Why does always people use Ash? I don't get it. Why do people use Ash? Why you are so meta? No. I'm not meta sheep as the thing is, it's just a good card. If you don't have money for Ash, the optional is Effect Veiler, um, Ghost Ogre. Um, those are the most cheapest right now, in my opinion. Ghost Ogre, it is cheap, it's like four to three dollars, even less, depending on if you can get um, the play, uh, even less if you get it more cheaper. It depends, but right now, Effect Veiler is your best choice on a good hand trap, a cheap one. So no impermanence if you're trying to say if you want to if, remember if you want to use very expensive cards use them in your own plays know what you're doing um that's my advice that's my opinion go for it if you want to now for the spells this deck is very heavy spell base so right now we're running three copies of the appliance uh reuse now this is actually a really cool card and i think it's the best one because it's not once per turn Target one applies a monster in your grave especially but replace but place it in the bottom of the deck while this card leaves now this is great because it re um it gives you back resources from your graveyard back to your deck and it's actually like the best thing about it because if you use that appliance sir, already two copies of that appliance sir, use that bring it back to the field and link it up so you can reuse it back into the deck and you have more targets targets i gotta say this is actually a really good spell and it's so underrated for that because it's not once per turn and it's great in my opinion next up we are running three copies of the appliance or electric uh electric electrical world now this is the field spell which i love and is really good it's i'm saying it's really good it's so underrated i'm gonna say it's really good when this card is activated, you can add one appliance or card from your deck to your hand. Um, so yeah, it means that this card loses timing because it has win. Sorry. Except a field spell. Once per turn, you can link an appliance or monster. You can you you can add, when you link summon an appliance or monster, you can add one appliance or monster from your deck to your hand. So easily enough, this will resource you back the appliance that you use for a link material, which is nice. Once per turn, when a monster declares an attack, you can move one appliance or monster you control from another of your main monsters um, to the main monster zone. So yeah, you can bring the appliance in the link and the extra monster zone to the main monster zone. So you have when you're doing you know your other turns or when it's your turn, you can do more link summonings, which is really nice. But you can only use this effect once per turn. Now the only copy we're running of the spells of the appliances is appliance or tester. The reason is here's why. You can target one appliance or monster you control special summon as many link one appliance or monster from your graveyard as possible to the zone that monster points to, but banish them uh, them during the end phase. You can only use this as a card uh, this card's effect once per turn. It's good, but it's bad at the same time because if you don't link them, they will be banished. So I recommend you link them to other monsters. And the other effect and the other downside is this is a once per turn card. So yeah, that is the sad part about this card. This is a really good card. And it's a sad thing about this card. But I can understand because you can summon all the link one monsters of the appliance and you can just bring back a big monster. So I can see where Konami decided to put that there. But yeah. Now for the other generic spells that we're using. You're using three copies of Where Are Those? 
If you control a uh, face of level 1 monster, add one level 1 monster from your deck to your hand. During the end phase, you take t uh, this, um, take 2,000 damage if you did not normal summon that added monster or a card with the same name after this effect. So easy enough, this sometimes will bug you, but it's definitely worth paying the 2,000 life points. Not paying, taking the 2,000 life points. Um, it is, um, you need to summon... Um, all of these guys sometimes there will be normal summon so that is the downside of this but overall you will be getting another appliance and the great thing is that if you get a copy or a, another soccer roll either one if you use either one you special summon them both and you will be going to an, a good link summoning which is pretty nice in my opinion um take the 2000 damage it's worth it and this is the only thing and only card that i can see that it can give you a level one for another level one so yeah Oh, I just hit my mug. Next up, three copies of Machine Duplication. This card really needs a reprint because um, they're really expensive right now. They're like $5 each, and huh, it's getting expensive. Every you can try one machine monster you control with uh, 500 of attack or less. Special amount to two monsters with the same name as the face up monster. This, easy enough, is one of the um, more staple cards in the deck because these are all machines, not cybers, machines, which is really nice. And yes, because they're a machine, you're thinking of um, Cyber Dragons, you're thinking about um, other decks that will combine with this deck initially. But in my opinion, this will not work with Cyber Dragons. I do not know. If you prove me wrong, that's fine. Show me a link. Leave me a link or something that proves me wrong. I will love to see that. Be I, I will love that. I would like that people will, can prove me wrong in the decks that I make or use overall. Next up, we are running three copies of Call by the Grave. Yes, oh my god, my, my cash wallet. Oh my god. If you don't have Call by the Grave, use whatever spell you like that, you know, it could be nice. Um, but right now, Call by the Grave is the best safe choice. And it's my opinion, the best investment you can make for $15. I think it's right now like $5 each or $7 each. But in my opinion, it's the best investment, even if you just got the one play set. Do your best to get the commons or the cheapest ones you can get. It doesn't matter if you just have the uh, it doesn't matter if you have two two is good oh i just ruined that up oops sorry my bad it doesn't matter if you have only two called by the graves because you can use the, that other stuff for something else you want it's debatable any options that you want i used to run a while to call by grace in many of my decks because of the uh, ban list a long time ago but right now it's the best choice to have call by the grave as a good investment and it's the cheapest investment you can make um in my opinion you can use it in so many decks you can do that so i recommend you even if you don't want to hear me, I highly recommend you do the investment of the Call by the Graves. Even if you're a budget player, this is the best option. The thing, the great thing about this, this is one of the best investments you, see you can make in the game. You don't have to invest on the hand traps because right now the hand traps, they can go wild. But the Call by the Graves are the best thing to stop any kind of plays that your opponent is going to do a play. That will stop you in a very crucial way, in my opinion. This can go good or bad depending on how it is that's my verdict now for the one-ups we are running one for one because these are all level one monsters what part of that is because we are we're throwing a lot of um uh material for link summoning and a lot of resources so we should be bringing these back and have a little bit of a drop power and the one terraforming so we can you know add the field spell really easily but already obviously Many times the field spell will show in your hand, which is nice. Now for the trap cards, yeah, trap cards. Yeah, I know. Trap cards? Really? Trap cards? It's something that can help. It always helps. So we're running just two Solomon Strikes. Yes, I know, right now, but Solomon Strike is not cheap. I think it's like, what, 3 to $2. In my opinion, it's worth it, if you can. But in my opinion, it is worth it. One metaverse. The reason why is is your second terraforming because you don't have that much ways to use this. To add it to your hand or activate it, it doesn't matter. As long as you have the field spell, this will be a go-to card. Right now, your ace card right now is the appliance or sucker on the main in the main uh, main deck. But don't you know allude to yourself for him. But remember that you have the entire deck. 
still he is the, the main man now for the extra deck now obviously extra decks are always gonna be optionable um you know the ideas of what it is and you know of how you play we're going first with the one link karibo now because they're all level ones the great thing about this is you can tag a level one monster so you can bring him back to the graveyard and boom bada bang you got their their link Rio is always going to be your go-to um best friend in my opinion so that is all for the uh for him next up we are running the for the code breakers we're running one code breaker virus swordsman now i thought these guys were these guys were really cool i thought they were going to have a full archetype but just they only have just very just only three monsters there's no spells no trap cards just only three monsters which is one monster and two link monsters but really good ones now it reads it requires two effect monster when this card is special summon so it misses timing if you call in this card you can special one code breaker zero day from your deck hand or graveyard to any zone a link monster points now remember if you just use just one of the apply uh, an appliance that just has that down arrow or you just summon him and you don't use his arrow well it is a little bit just um sad during the end phase, if this card is in the graveyard because it was destroyed while in possession by an opponent's card and sent to the grave, uh, this turn, you can special on this card but banish it when it leaves the field. Now, this is not what you want. The thing is that you want him, him and Codebreaker so you can link him up to the big guy himself, which is Codebreaker Vice Berserker. Now, Berserker is really, and I mean, I'm sorry, I'm going to say it, it's really good. It's really good in a fun way. If you're, if you're trying to make this in a competitive say, go nuts with it, but... It is a good thing because it reads if card has two plus monsters, including a code breaker monster, it can be even the link monster itself. When this card is special summon, if it's co link, you can special summon up to two code breaker monsters from your hand, hand or graveyard, any zone a link monster points to. Thus, it has to be co link, meaning that his points and other ones will actually help, which is nice. And the other effect is during the main phase, you can destroy a spell and trigger your opponent controls up to the number of code breaker monsters on the field. So right now, because there's three, you can destroy in a total of three, which is really nice. And it's a really good destruction um, of all time. So that's pretty much basically the um, the three non appliance um, late monster we're running. Now for the main guys, we're running three copies of appliance um, Celtipus. Uh, this is a really good monster. This is going to be the conduit for the appliances to become to become uh, more stronger and have more effects and be connected. Now it requires two appliances and monsters. This link mo card cannot be targeted by your opponent's card effects or their attack. So easing that when this card is co-linked or linked cannot be targeted by attack or by your opponent's card effects, which is really nice. But you know, banish it's but when it's banishment or or kaiju or tribute something like that, it's a little bit sad. So it reads during the damage calculation, if an appliance or link monster you control co-link to this card battles an opponent's monster, your battling monster gains attack equal to the number of code link monsters this card by one thousand. So it has two markers so two code link monsters equals a swapping total of 2000 of attack during the damage calculation only once per turn if an applies from link monster you control is not co-linked to this card and destroyed by battle by card effect, you draw a card so it's really nice that if something happens to your appliances you draw a card very nice and no here and a warning here this monster cannot ever attack You're saying but why the reason why is that he does not get the boost and he's only there as a conduit he's just there for that to be a conduit and it's a good thing and and i'm okay with that that he is a conduit for the appliances instead of being a um a boss monster in general he is a conduit monster so yeah pretty much that's really nice now for my opinion the bo the boss monster is the appliance laundry dragon i can hear one guy saying are you stupid or something yes i am stupid i'm saying that because i am true to my word i believe this is the boss monster in my opinion, it requires one appliance or monster. This card reads cannot be used as link material. The turn this card was link summoned. Neither player can take any damage from attacking mode. This card meaning that if your opponent attacks this, you don't take no damage. Once per turn, after the ba uh, damage calculation, if this co link ba uh, card battles an opponent's monster, you can banish that monster. 
once per turn after the damage calculation if this card if this monster it, that is not cone linked battles an opponent's monster you can destroy that opponent's monster and if you do inflict your opponent damage equal to its original attack now that's actually pretty good that it can banish your opponent's monsters when it's co linked and if it's not co you can destroy that monster not losing um uh um light points in in the process destroying it plus your opponent takes damage equal to the original attack that my friends i like this a lot and i always go to the laundry dragon it's really nice. Now we're running two copies of the appliance of vacuum elephant, uh, vacuum elephant. I'm gonna call it the vacuum elephant, whatever. I don't know how to say that. Vacuum elephant, something like that. Now this is another really good link monsters. Now it requires one appliance or monster cannot be used as a link material. The turn this card is used. All of them will have that, so I'm gonna skip that to the other uh, when I'm skipping to the other ones. Now, Ares can can attack the wreckage while this card is not not co-linked. You can set one card from your hand to the graveyard, then target one card your opponent controls and destroy it. Very really nice, but, but there's the there's the but. If this card is co-linked, you can target one monster your opponent controls in the monster zone and destroy it. You can only use it as a faggot once. But the great thing is that it will swap when it's co-linked and set, um, to a better uh, to a good effect. Of the cost one, which is nice. Now we have two copies of a planter dry drag. This is the um, the hair dryer, which is pretty good. obviously these all require one appliance or monster. Same effect, same same condi summon condition. This link this link card gains one thousand of attack once per turn during the battle the, the battle phase. If this card is co link Except during the damage state, you can switch two lo uh, locations of two appliance or monsters in the main monster zone, including this card. If you do the other monster, you can you, the other monster can make a second attack during each battle phase this turn. Once per turn, when this card is not calling, you can target for an uh, its target effect. You can negate the attack. So it has. A very mouthful uh, effect. So easy enough to explain is when he attacks, he can swap any appliances from the markers to another, um, so they can swap. So if let's just say um, Laundry Dragon is calling with uh, Celtipus and Drake, they can swap and get different effects. And meaning that because I swapped them, he can attack twice. Which is really nice, and then because of this card it was not co-linked, you can target uh, if this car uh, if this card was targeted for attack, you can negate the attack, which is really cool. Interesting card, right? Gotta say. Now we have two appliancer kappa scale. This is the last monster we're last of the appliancers because we don't have the other one, which is the the fan. Same effect. And reaching true this co this co link mo card, special one appliancer monster link monster from your graveyard, except uh kappa the other effect is you can treat with this card it's not code link special one lower appliance or monster from your graveyard you can only use this effect once per turn that's pretty much it uh what it does is that it can bring you back your appliances for free or just special something applies for free that meaning that when you um co link when you link something to this you have this and bring them to the field which is nice i gotta say but yeah that's pretty much it for the extra deck. Obviously, you can swap these out for many different combinations of other uh, monsters, other link monster one. You you can use more generic one. I prefer this. You can um I'm gonna say this. You can you can put this at two. You can put this at one. You can put this at one. You can put this at one. But I like the appliances a lot, so I'm running these guys as much as I like because of their effects, which is pretty interesting. You can swap these. I might swap these in the near future when I get more um um copies of cards that i want but in my opinion this is actually pretty good of a run-up and it's a cheap um extra deck you don't have boros or appaloosa or anything like that this is my opinion the cheapest um extra that i can think of you can put unicorn right now it's super cheap nightmare griffin is another good option because you when you co-link with griffin your opponent cannot do anything and it's a good idea um i might try it out Later, what else? Uh, Boros Sword. Actually, no, Boros Sword's a little bit expensive. Um, Try it, Wizard. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. I can think of right now. I'm the head of my tie. So, side deck, obviously. Calm your freaking tits, titters. The side deck is always gonna be 
an option. You don't have to get these cards. You don't have to buy them. You don't have to use them. They're always going to be optionable. You don't have to buy these. These are my choices of the side deck in if you want. So, oh, Triple Ogre, two copies of the Planster Test, one Monster Reborn, the Infernal Wreck, the Summon. This actually is a decent card, but not that great. Limited Removal, one one Order, one the, the Third Strike, and Triple Judgment. Now, that's pretty much it. You can always do something different. You can always do something cheaper. You can use something whatever you want. It's always your option of what you want to run in the side deck, extra deck, or in the main deck. I'm just using this. You can use this as a guide of what to use. Now, enough of me babbling and uh, like an idiot. You want to see some replays. That's why you want to see some replays. Now, I think this was one of the appliances ones. Yeah, this is um pretty interesting one. This is appliances against um poof, burning abyss. I just had a brain fart right there. So you can see the plays that he's doing. You can see there he has a lot of trap cards there. Breakthrough skills are really. If you guys want to swap the um strikes for something cheaper, breakthrough skills are really good cards. Solomon one is as well. Now you can see what am I doing here? Um. Boom, activate. He sets it down. Obviously, I get that. Special summon him. One for one, bring him out. I can transform him to that. Bring out the code breaker, activate the code breaker's effect. He's gonna negate the code breaker's effect, but that's, that doesn't matter. I get that for free. I do have the big guy himself. He does that, doesn't matter, because his effect activates himself. So yeah, look at that. Activate that. Because he was code linked, I can destroy the monster for free. I call by the grave him. And boom. I battle against 3000. The effect of the administer, he gets special summon. And that's game. So yeah, that's pretty fun. Like, it has so much amazing potential, the deck. Um, as a fun, not a fun deck not a competitive if you want to do a competitive well that's another can of worms now let's see this one oh i don't remember this one oh yeah this is like um this weird guy that i um played that he was using a coin based deck which i i i give him props for this because you know Nobody uses coin flip decks except for the only card that matters is Dark Sanctuary. Because I can't do anything to Dark Sanctuary, I don't have any things to destroy the spells and track cards. This is my best option just to just do my plays and pass. He's gonna attack. I know about his effect, which is if this card uh, attacks heads or tails, he can destroy the monster, which is, I guess. Not sad. Do this. I add another appliancer. Then I go to Code Breaker. Boom. Bring the big guy himself. Now I bring him. And that's all. And yeah. Pretty good card. Um, the reason why is that you don't see the other guy is that I didn't have him in my hand or graveyard. That's the thing. It is a little bit, you know, tricky to bring him out, but, you know, it helps. Uh, this one is... Oh, yeah, this one, it was a really crazy one. This was a doozy. This was numeric, and it was really kind of tough. So, obviously, numeric, numeric monsters are being so used now because of the effect. Oh, you can't do anything for this turn. I just call by the grave that thing. I just had to pass and wait. Doesn't get destroyed. I use strike. I fuck him up. No more numerics. I can play normally. So, yeah. He does affect Valor. I don't really care. The great thing is that I bring out monsters and monsters. He does that thing. I really don't care. Um, yeah. And Karibo. Bring him. Bring the Code Breaker. I bring this mother mothers. 
activate his effect, bring that. Then I go to the big guy himself. Then I go to the laundry. I activate his effect so I can destroy the spell because he was calling. And yeah, pretty much. It, uh, pay um, Star Blast. I never heard of this card, so he was gonna do that. Do that. Battle, destroy him. Boom. That was my fault right there that I couldn't attack him there because I forgot. I remember I forgot that I had him and I could have swapped him in attack position and and won for game. And that's pretty much it. But yeah. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, do apologize for the microphone or any sounds in the background. I really do apologize um, because I was updating at the computer. The defaults it went to default settings. My microphone, so that was a tough one. And also the construction in the background. Apologize, but yeah, oop, I just hit again the microphone. Sorry. So guys, I hope you enjoy. If you like this video, comment, like, subscribe. If you want to share this video to your friends, family, or whatever you want to do. I don't know if you have families to play Yu-Gi-Oh! Brothers, sisters, or cousins, or I don't know, whatever it is. Share this with them. Have fun with them. You know, this game is about fun. Uh, fun, having some good memories. Beating the living poop out of uh, each other's in, with, with paper. <laughs> And you know, stuff like that. If you didn't like this video, um, there's the door and there's the window, and I'll see you guys later. Bye bye.